and naturally he's now bringing Labour further to the right on various initial policy changes. He's confirmed the change of policy on Kashmir where instead of supporting international law and the right of self-determination for Kashmiris, which was Labour's policy, that there should be a referendum essentially, allowing the Kashmiri people to decide what they want to do. Kashmir is a historic um, disputed territory essentially, where both Pakistan and India claim it for themselves and China claims a small area. And there's been massive human rights abuses, especially on the Indian side. But now he's altered the policy such that he sided with the Modi, the conservative right wing Indian government, in that he believes he said it, he's come out and said it's a bilateral issue between Pakistan and India. But it's not. It's an issue of international law, it's an issue. For he should be supporting what the Kashmiris want to do. It's, it's their land. If, if he believes in democracy, he should believe in giving a democratic control over their land to the Kashmiris. They should be able to choose who governs them. And yet he claims to be an internationalist, and yet he's taking an anti-internationalist view, because the international community in UN resolutions have supported, as did Labour, uh, self-determination for the Kashmiris. And yet now he's taking it as if it's just a, oh, it's just a bilateral issue for those two countries. That's a disgrace. That And that is wrong. We should not be saying that. We should be supporting the Kashmiri people to self-determine. And when it comes to things like rent policy during this pandemic, there does seem to be a shift there also. Now, I know this is a little bit controversial because some people who were involved dispute this, but to me, the evidence is still strong that it was a shift. In the last few weeks of Corbyn's tenure, um, he changed the policy from one of deferral of rent, which would mean it would still be liable, you just pay it back at a later date, to suspension, which appears to have an established contract law meaning of essentially a waiver. There's various legal websites that uh, show that and in policy documents produced by Labour and in letters that Jeremy Corbyn sent to uh, Boris Johnson and um, Alex Nunns who's you know a political advisor and speechwriter for Corbyn who was present during these discussions has confirmed that they did mean suspension as in a waiver where renters would not be liable for the rent during that three month period and so they wouldn't have to pay it back after the coronavirus pandemic is over and that is obviously a much more socialist renter friendly policy where many renters will have significantly reduced incomes on furlough pay or on reduced hours or on universal credit or some may even lose their jobs during this highly unusual time and, and unfortunately Starmer um, supports a deferral of rent and it appears to me to be for those claiming that it was actually Labour's policy already under Corbyn to mean a deferral it seems to me that there has been a miscommunication or a misunderstanding by uh, Healy, the Shadow Housing Minister, who has written that the policy was deferrable already under Corbyn. But I believe that there was a change in the Leader of the Opposition's Office, but it wasn't correctly portrayed to Healy, if that's the case, who has written that deferrable was already the policy under Corbyn. And it was at one point but it seems clear to me that there was a change and that has not, for whatever reason, been properly articulated to Healy. But the evidence from Alex Nunns and John McDonnell openly stating that it would cause an unfair debt accumulation to make renters pay this back. And with the fact suspension does appear to have 
and established contract law meaning to mean a cancellation, a waiver, essentially, not a deferral where they'd have to pay it back. So it seems as though Starmer has put the policy back to deferral, which is not as helpful for renters and is the wrong position to take. And in Starmer's interviews and in his press releases and PMQs, he has been unable to correctly criticise the government's response to this pandemic. He's been banging on about the exit strategy when for weeks there has been strong public support for a lockdown where there's an unknown deadly, deadly virus in the country. Of course, they want the government's response to be different in that the economic packages have not correctly catched everyone and given everyone sufficient protection during this time. In fact, they've left millions disgracefully to the wayside, but that's highlighted in other videos. And Starmer has not defended the working class enough during this pandemic. In fact, in many ways, it's as though he's siding with big business and the Tories, which are the party of big business, in wanting people to get back to work quicker than is perhaps safe enough to do so. There isn't testing to a significant enough degree in place. In, even in, in the public sector, they can't, the Tories cannot get enough PPE to these sites, like hospitals, care homes and so forth, and to bus drivers and all the other frontline workers. What do you think it's like in the private sector? I mean, many businesses will not be able to enforce or adapt to two metres social distancing. We don't have a vaccine. The Tories' guidance to businesses are completely toothless and weak. They're, they're not going to force private companies to significantly adapt their conditions um, in order to sufficiently make the environment safe enough. The guidance that they've released so far has, where possible, written all over it. That's just a complete get-out clause where businesses will just say, well, sorry, it wasn't possible, so we can't implement it. Starmer should be insisting that businesses adapt and that the Tories force businesses to adapt and make the workplaces, where they can obviously, as safe as possible. Whereas currently, many businesses will not be feel like they're compelled enough to implement significant changes, whether that's in relation to the PPE like gloves, etc., or hand sanitizers, or the social distancing. Starmer did not criticise the Tories, as far as I'm aware, for keeping uh, non-essential construction open and for keeping non-essential businesses open. B&Q are now back open. I drove past a B&Q store the other day. They was queuing out the car park when I was going for food. Many of those people were pensioners who were retired. And as far as, far, as, far as I'm aware, that strongly goes against the guidelines to be going out. Why is B&Q back open? Why is Greg's back open? Is it totally necessary that people eat pies and pasties? Well, it's disappointing how the leader of the Labour Party, that socialism is worker controlled. And yet he hasn't defended workers to enough during this crisis. It, it, it seems as though he's on the side of big business and on the capitalist class. He's not highlighted to a significant degree the lack of PPE in care homes and on the front line in hospitals, etc. We had a shipment last week of hundreds of thousands of PPE from Turkey. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't meet the spec and the Tories have pr procured it and we don't know if they miscommunicated the specification. We don't know if they um, fail to properly vet the supplier but ultimately we now have thousands of pounds worth of dud PPE that we can't use. Starmer needs to come out on this. He, in, During his PMQs he has been completely timid and at some points servile to the government. 
he has praised Raab and the government in their testing at a time when they've completely missed the target, when thousands that they're including in these tests don't include tests that have actually been carried out, just tests that have been posted in test kit format, which is an utter ridiculous disgrace. No one would ever say that you've done a test if you posted it when we don't know if the test is going to be actually reach the person's house or if the person will carry out the test and if they will send them back to the lab for a result. So to say that, that a test has been done is ridiculous. The Tories are including it in their data. Starmer has in no manner stuck up for these issues to, to a significant enough degree. And yet he's got his shadow cabinet on this national unity, constructive criticism, complete BS bandwagon, which means that we don't have a real opposition. The, the, the Tories right now should be getting completely destroyed. And Ipsos Mori Paul has shown that only 24% of the public thought that Keir Starmer and Labour were providing a sufficient opposition. The journalists were double that. It, it's, it's an embarrassment. That, that's what it really is. He's clearly trying to appease the business class who clearly want to get profits moving again and Britain back to work, whether it's safe or not. This is when millions of people are facing severe economic hardship, evidence that they're skipping meals, some people that are really struggling, going into significant debt, being missed from these schemes. Businesses will be going under. The number of businesses that went bust in April, I believe, was 50% uh, higher than the same time last year. When staff at hospitals still don't have correct PPE, when we have the second highest death rate in the world, and Keir Starmer is not providing any type of, of opposition. It's, it's an embarrassment and a disgrace. That's what it is.